Uh, so, hi everyone, uh, my name is Andrew Schweiss. So, as uh, Arthur told you, I'm a senior software developer here on SoftServe. And I want to talk about uh, my experience. So, on previous project, uh, we had run into some issues uh, with memory usage. Uh, so, one day, our customers, just uh, customers of our client, uh, went to us and said that their environment became really slow and it looks like our application is slowing them down so we just hey we are just making just small add-in so how can it affect it so you so much so we had done a lot of investigations uh, we had spent some sprints like two or three just to understand what's happening and we were able to find a solution uh, that will that would help them uh, so let's talk about that so just uh, a small introduction. So uh, we are lucky that we have like, garbage collectors that uh, releases all the memory uh, for us. Uh, and we don't have to like most of the time just think about that. Um, so how it's happening. So CLR just maintains like root objects that form a graph and when at some point uh, some objects becomes unreachable, uh, the garbage collector will decide if he should delete that from memory. Uh, so how CLR stores objects in memory? So we have a small heap and large heap. Uh, so everything that is less than 85 kilobytes uh, just uh, goes under small heap. Uh, so Let's, uh, for example, we have creating some objects and we are storing some, we are, we are creating some objects. Uh, at first phase, they are stored in uh, uh, generation one, generation zero, sorry, uh, generation zero collection. Uh, once all the space that uh, generation zero collection has is uh, full, uh, we perform garbage collection. Uh, so some objects will die and some objects will be promoted to generation one. Uh, and uh, this will happen until, for example, generation one collection will be will be full. Uh, then those objects that from generation one uh, will be promoted to generation two and uh, garbage for collection for them is performed really rarely. Uh, so all other objects that are bigger than 85 kilobytes are going to the large object heap. This is just small overview, so we can just have a small understanding. I will not dive deep so much into like this memory handling. Uh, so what basic workflow we had when we were fixing our memory issues? First of all, it was to identify. Uh, you have your application and only some small workflows uh, can cause you mem memory issue. So your first step is actually to talk with your clients, uh, help your testers uh, to establish how to figure out what's happening on the client machine. Second one, after you gather some information, you just profile it. So you take some memory profiler set up your local environment and just work with it. And the last step, actually, if you have automation team, team this is great. Uh, with them, you try to automate uh, this scenario and also add this to your, uh, um, uh, as your to, to your requirements that some scenarios should be covered, some memory scenarios should be covered. And this is actually the workflow that you are going through. And uh, what is the benefit of this create auto test for scenario is actually that every regression that's happening on your project, those auto tests will, will find out if you have broken your code and you reintroduced your memory leak. Okay, so let's talk about the types of memory issues. Uh, so first, memory leak. Uh, so 
garbage collector can't remove object from memory when it's no longer used. So this is the most common times that you are asked to fix. But that is not like the, the only concern that you should think about. Uh, another one is ineffective memory usage. usage. So sometimes uh, unknowingly you dedicate more memory or don't free memory when it's needed. And another time it's high memory traffic. So first of all, uh, when garbage collector performs garbage collection, it's actually very high consuming cooperation. Uh, some, sometimes your UI or main thread will be blocked and uh, your application will be unresponsive. Uh, so you need to watch for that and apply some techniques that will reduce that. So how to detect memory issue? Uh, so maybe some of you have heard like application performance monitor. Uh, so let's open it. And it should be, uh, it's part of Windows Toolkit on every machine. And you can just add performance counters that will track uh, Perf track performance uh, or take into account some statistics that is happening with your machine. Uh, so for example, uh, let's, let's add some new data set, set. just one moment. Uh, for example, uh, we are interesting, like, let's look at .NET memory. So for example, we uh, we see that our application is just sometimes is slowing down. So for example, maybe it's because of garbage collection Take, it takes too much time. So we add this uh, counter and we can just create some information for us. Uh, so cl uh, our client can, can run this on, on his computer and give us some uh, data to analyze. And uh, for example, we see that, okay, yeah, it's actually, I was right. It was the garbage collection that, that uh, is, is a problem. Or I can see that uh, memory is constantly rising up and it uh, doesn't go down after some period of time. Uh, so this is a tool that will help you to communicate or uh, to get some data from your client. So there are a few, things that you should watch about. So we have like private bytes uh, that is located under processes uh, and it will, sh if it rises up and doesn't goes down, it's a, an indicator that you probably have a memory leak. Also bytes in all heaps, if it's also goes up and doesn't go down over time, it's also an indicator uh, that you are probably having a memory leak. So what is, uh, let's talk more about what is actually memory leaks. Uh, so sometimes if objects are reference, uh, are still reference, but, but are not used uh, because uh, garbage collectors sees that they are used, uh, it will never free them from the memory. Uh, another way is actually that we are working with some unmanaged memory or unmanaged resource. And uh, we just forget to release this resource. So it can be stream, graphics, or some com objects. And uh, this will stay with you also forever until you kill your process or run out of memory. So what, so we have found out uh, that we have some memory issue like on client's machine. So we can, we know uh, what that we should look for some memory issues. So what are, what are next steps? So we actually download some of the uh, profilers. I have used that memory and Visual Studio profiler. 
I would recommend if possible dot memory because it has more options, better views. Uh, but still, if the customer won't pay for that, uh, Visual Studio Profile Photo is also great. I was able to figure out a lot of issues with that, uh, but it's not so informative. So let's look uh, at uh, common causes of memory leak and how to avoid that. Uh, so first of all, it's like subscribing to events. Uh, let's look at some example. So ju just a basic example. Uh, so we are, uh, for example, in constructor passing some object uh, that has uh, an event and we should subscribe to this event in here. If this object alive is for some reason kept alive, uh, we will cause that uh, we will find that this class memory leak will give us a memory leak. It will never, never be released until a live object is alive. And that is a problem. So you have to like, uh, the best case is actually to implement dispose method and just unsubscribe from this event handler. Uh, the other like problems is actually capturing members uh, in anonymous, un anonymous methods. Uh, also static variables. Uh, if you have a static variable, uh, they're always like generation two, they, they never will be released. Same goes with caching. You have to be careful with that uh, because you can run out of memory. Uh, those people who work with VPF bindings uh, know that if you don't uh, implement identify property change interface and uh, don't use them in their in, in the properties that you are using in view model will also cause you memory leaks. Some that I ha also have experienced, we had a timer uh, in, uh, in our application and we forgot just to unsubscribe, just to release it. So this thread has never been terminated. It, it was not also, also just uh, stealing our memory it also also was stealing our processor time and we have experienced slowness regarding that. And also you can work with com objects and manage resources. Uh, always release them. So, so uh, just from my experience, uh, I, I was a VPF developer subscribing to events caching, VPF buyings, uh, threads, and incorrect releasing of com objects or manager sources, Alex, the, the, the top things that you will face with, when memory profiling. It just, it all, almost every application has them. Uh, let's talk some another way. So uh, we were talking that it's not okay for a garbage collector to run very often uh, because uh, it actually will take some time. It takes some time for you, from you. It freezes your UI, freezes your threads, freezes your application. Uh, so why? Because you allocate too much objects on the heap and uh, garbage collector needs to, to work with, uh, to deal with that. Uh, so for example, if for some reason you have a collection of uh, boxed objects, you will be facing this issue. Uh, another way, you don't think that uh, you, uh, from my experience, we always like create a new list and then just manually add uh, elements to, the, uh, to that list. Uh, we will face the problem uh, that from time to time we will have to increase our collection size and CLR does that under the hood, uh, but every such increase uh, affects the memory that is allocated and it can f like force garbage collection. So when you 
create a collection, just set capacity for it beforehand and it will help you a lot. Uh, so changing string contents. Uh, so I, I believe everybody is familiar uh, with string builder. So this is solution to you. So you don't have to like uh, append uh, all your strings manually because it just uh, creates additional uh, allocations on, on the heap. Uh, another and uh, link you. This is like uh, almost every .NET developer uses that, but we can face issue with that. Uh, so let's look into some code. Uh, so this is just a, a small uh, example. So for example, we have uh, one method where we have a list uh, that just give us every item that is uh, has length bigger than three. Uh, for if, it, if it's like just a small number, like 100, 200, it will not affect uh, our heap so much. Uh, but when the item count increases, uh, under the hood, CLR, CLR creates just the helper classes, objects uh, on the fly uh, to make everything smoother, to make LinQ work. And all this uh, additional stuff is located on the heap. So if you have really critical high performance code, you should avoid that and just use uh, simple for each and this will help you. And another situation that actually also I encountered uh, is uh, actually, for example, just locking some message. Uh, we have our login solution. Uh, we have our generic message that we need to lock. And also there are some additional parameters to that. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. No, uh, nothing usual, uh, but every time when you call this object just like that, a new array is allocated on uh, on the heap. So for example, uh, uh, if you just lock 100 times, 100 times a uh, new array was created on the heap. And we just can avoid it just by creating a special method for log message just that accepts only string message if you're not passing any parameters. So this will help help us. And as I was talking, it's also Lambda expressions uh, is facing the same problem as link U. So if you have a possibility to replace this with for each, I, I encourage you to do that. And another, uh, another problem that we can f f run into is actually ineffective uh, memory usage. Mm, so let's look into code one more time. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, I work a lot of uh, a lot of time with uh, parsing some uh, XML files. And actually, I saw that I know this thing. Uh, for example, every time that you create a string, for example, like that, we know that it will be cached. Uh, by CLR and uh, the next time uh, we will uh, actually declare some another variable uh, like like that. We know that it will point to the same uh, to, to the same object on the heap. Uh, but actually when you are reading on the fly, it's 
it doesn't use this value it doesn't use cache values so if you will face like multiple fives in your xml document and will will try to read it every time it's just new allocation on the heap so uh, what we can do to improve our our memory consumption is actually we have a string intern method uh, that will put uh, that will not create a new reference on the heap, but will just use an existing one. Another way is just improve our caching. Uh, so it's so we should implement some mechanism uh, that after some time will check if uh, our cache should be uh, validated and, and expired and uh, just cleaned after some time. There are a lot of uh, techniques how to do that. Uh, another way is just when you're working with unmanaged resources, always provide a, a way to release them and uh, use uh, a disposable pattern. So, so that's basically it. And uh, what what is uh, what also I want to talk to you about is actually that uh, previously we had to investigate and uh, work with uh, memory leaks, but now we can detect them but in code just without uh, without profiling so uh, jetbrains has uh, provides us a free tool uh, free to get package uh, where we, so that we can use to profile our application we can create tests that will check for the amount of memory allocated uh, we can check if uh, object is created in memory we can check if the object is released in memory so for example uh, let's look at some test so we have like a uh, number of allocated bytes so we have two different methods to reverse string uh, one is for example is using so we just reverse so we just split our string uh, into chunks and just iterate uh, backwards and form a new string res string result uh, the smarter way is to use string builder and not to allocate so much memory. So with that, with that tool, uh, we are able to run our tests and see that when we're using uh, insufficient method, uh, more memory is allocated. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we have uh, this one. So we are we have actually checking that uh, memory traffic with string builder. So this is actually allocated site is under one hundred bytes, and when we are using insufficient algorithm. Uh, we can see that it's even bigger than 200 bytes, so the size for allocation increases. And also, there's us other possibilities. We can che check how many objects are present in memory. And I encourage you to investigate this library in case you need to automate, create some unit tests to test your code and uh, see if this helps you. Uh, So that's basically it that I wanted to 
talk to you if you have some questions so i can just uh, talk from my experience uh, maybe i can help you with something and that's it